Hello and welcome to Cultural Capital, our show all about London and its amazing arts and culture. This week we're heading into a very weird immersive installation created in Mayfair by the artist duo A.A. Murakami. We're taking the temperature of London's emerging art world at an exhibition of work by some of its most promising graduate artist students. Thing of the Week takes a look at a project that aims to humanise the patient experience in a world of scary PPE and I'll review Lin-Manuel Miranda's latest film, an adaptation of Rent creator Jonathan Larson's first stage musical, Tick, Tick, Boom. First though, following a year of what felt at times like full-on sensory deprivation, what could be nicer or possibly more disconcerting than a multi-sensory installation that envelops you in a seemingly endless forest of sight, smell, touch and sound, and apparently belches misty bubbles. It sounds quite mad, so we decided to explore. So as you walk in, you'll be entering a kind of uh, dark space with this kind of simulation of a cool moonlight. And uh, there's a forest of uh, metal white trees that are shedding um, kind of mist filled bubbles that are kind of like moonlight orbs that descend in the space. And they contain different scents. So you can go on an olfactory journey of the space. Yeah, we really like working with scents because scents is one of those things you smell and it kind of goes straight to your consciousness. So it's very linked to memory. So when, uh, when the visitors come to the show, we want to give them an experience that they've never seen before, experienced before. We're really interested in kind of the relationship between uh, the artificial, the industrial, kind of man-made and with nature and um, obviously going forward in this world with the increasingly kind of uh, fragility around our natural environment, um, the kind of questions around how you know man-made and nature can coexist in a kind of harmonious way are kind of more pertinent than ever. So we, we kind of like exploring uh, technology that has um, an element that's ethereal or ephemeral and that can be have that kind of fleeting beauty that nature has. We make kind of completely custom made technology um, for the artwork. It's not something that it exists already that we're kind of co-opting and the interface of that technology isn't kind of audiovisual like screens and projections. The way that we experience technology every day we're kind of a slave to screens um, so we kind of feel that when you go into a gallery space and you experience tech art that it could it should offer something m more and we feel that uh, we're, we're very interested in materials and texture and things that act on your other senses that maybe um, you're not consciously aware of but have a uh, have a have a deep effect on you so that's things that um, are tactile that have um, scent um, that are shifting states of matter that never really fix in one um, form. Silent Fall is at Burlington Gardens until January the 9th. And in case you were worried that the next generation of artists couldn't be so ambitious due to the pandemic, you needn't. London Grads Now 21 has just opened at the Saatchi Gallery and aims to support and highlight the latest generation coming out of London's stellar art schools. We talked to the show's curators about how young artists have come out fighting. Yeah, I mean, London's alive again. It's exciting. People are interacting. People are looking at art again. I mean, it's like a total reboot. Everything shut down. Artist opportunities disappeared. So now to be able to have this is sort of that boost of encouragement. And I think it invites people to have sales and come across people to exhibit their work on a wider platform. The MA programme is an opportunity to really explore, to focus and to expand one's own artistic practical conversation with other like-minded individuals. The show here at Saatchi Gallery is then the great opportunity to take that work out of the studio setting, out of the institutional setting and put it in a gallery space where it can interact with a, with a very broad audience. 
I think a lot of the show when we were curating it and receiving all the submissions, we sort of found that there was like a natural fixation on materiality. And I think that sort of come from everyone spending so much time inside that there was this sort of like process of labor that went on and on. Anna Lena Cruz, her, her 3D sculptures were made in her living room. She bought a 3D printer and, and made them in her living room because she didn't have access to facilities. I mean, the way that the artists have found a way to still have that artistic expression with the limitations that they had is just amazing. It's like no stopping them, no boundaries, you know? I think the work reflects less of the panic that was being, that was hovering in the air around the pandemic. And artists have, um, the graduates have returned back to thinking about the things that matter to them in the first place, what their, what their practices were about to begin with. We were both really taken aback by the sheer quality of the work that's being submitted. It was not representative of work that was lacking in facilities. Like, it is so innovative, everything that's being produced, that I think is a real testament to the tenacity of this generation of artists. Absolutely, and, and London Grads now has not only brought together seven different schools, which is, is so exciting, it's also brought together different departments within our schools because, you know, sculpture and painting, maybe, you know, they didn't interact as much as now. I mean, we've managed to bring together artists and, and they've met and, and we've created almost like a little collective that, that can continue on. London Grads Now 21 is at the Saatchi Gallery until the 16th of January. Now, it's thing of the week. This is the PPU Portrait Project. It was initiated by an LA-based artist, Mary Beth Heffernan, in response to the Ebola outbreak in West Africa in 2014. She sought to ameliorate the menacing appearance of the hazmat suits in an attempt to improve the relationship between patient and carer. I think the beauty of this project and how it's been used in response to the COVID pandemic is in its accessibility. So the instructions for how to initiate the project are available for anyone to access online and for them to take up this project in their own context, however they see fit. The art isn't just the portraits, but the art is the tangible medical and psychosocial benefit of the project and the relationship that's formed between the patient and the carer. If you're not even slightly interested in musical theatre, I think it's unlikely I can interest you in this week's film if the thought of people breaking into song or the thought of the kind of people who might facilitate them to break into song gives you hives. This is probably not the movie for you. If, however, you loved Hamilton, you've seen at least three different productions of Sweeney Todd, and you instantly recognise the everybody has AIDS reference in Team America World Police, you're going to love Tick Tick Boom. The film, which is set in 1990, follows the story of a talented young musical theatre composer desperately trying to get his first musical to the stage while living in a squalid New York apartment, working in a diner and hurtling towards his 30th birthday. I have... It's ingeniously adapted by director Lin-Manuel Miranda and screenwriter Stephen Levinson from the one-man show of the same name written by the talented young musical theatre composer Jonathan Larson after he failed to get his first musical to the stage while living in a squalid New York apartment, working in a diner and hurtling towards his 30th birthday. It's pretty meta. Hey, boy genius. And I've spent the last eight years of my life writing. He's getting out. You're going to be rich and famous. At first, it can be slightly confusing. But to be honest, I think it represents a real shift forwards in putting stage musicals on screen, even moving on from Miranda's last effort with a screen version of his own New York story, In the Heights. Andrew Garfield plays Larson with a convincing manic energy, and yes, he can sing just fine. And the way the film cuts effortlessly between his Larson performing the show and the events that both form and lead up to it, it actually starts to be quite charming after a while. The cast, other than Garfield, is made up of mostly lesser known actors, although you will recognise that guy out of the West Wing, playing living musical theatre legend Stephen Sondheim. And they're all just really easy to watch, especially Robin de Jesus as Larson's best friend Michael. Inevitably, there's a cloud hanging over the movie that Miranda acknowledges right at the start with a brief bit of narration. About five years after he got the one-man show version of Tick, Tick, Boom onto the stage to critical acclaim, Larson created his first Broadway smash, Rent, which was based on Puccini's La Boheme 
and follows a group of impoverished New York artists as they struggle for survival in the shadow of the AIDS crisis, in which Larson lost many of his friends. The show was a huge hit and it won scores of awards, including 10 Tonys for the original Broadway production. But Larson never saw any of it. He died suddenly of an aortic dissection the morning of Rent's first preview off Broadway. It's gutting, isn't it? All of this is prefigured in the movie in sort of ingenious ways that mean you're never quite sure whether Larson was unbelievably prescient or whether Miranda is kind of giving hindsight the nod. Either way, it works really well. You're left with a sense of the thrill of artistic drive and the toll that it can take alongside a real feeling of loss of a supernova talent extinguished at the moment of its explosion. It's full of energy and it's really sad. If you really like musical theatre, if you slightly like musical theatre, you should watch it. Tick Tick Boom is in selected cinemas from today and on Netflix from next Friday. Thanks for watching Cultural Capital. As ever, do give us a like, share on social and subscribe to the Evening Standard YouTube channel so you never miss an episode. See you next week. Bye.